part four in our merchandising operations series, and we'll be discussing adjusting and closing entries for merchandising companies. So the first thing we'll look at is adjusting the accounts. Specifically, we're going to talk about adjusting inventory. So there's a couple of reasons we may need to adjust inventory. The first one is due to shrinkage. Now recall us talking about periodic and perpetual inventory. So no matter which method you use, even if you're using a perpetual method, you're still going to want to take a periodic inventory count. And when you do that, you may find that your physical count does not equal the count that's currently on your books. And this can be due to shrinkage. Things can walk out the store due to uh, your employees stealing from you or customers stealing from you. Also, there could be error or there could be damaged goods. So there are several things that can cause shrinkage. Now when we have shrinkage, we have to adjust our inventory to account for this because we no longer have that inventory on hand. However, we did pay for that inventory. So if it disappears or walks out the door, we need to expense it. So if we count our inventory and it's different from what's on the books, we'll need to increase our cost of goods sold and decrease our inventory by the difference. Let's look at closing. Now this should be kind of a review for you, but in addition to what we already know, we're going to be including those contra revenue accounts that we talked about earlier in an earlier part to the series. So I always close my entries or, or put my closing entries in the same order every time. That way I don't get confused. So I always close my revenues first. And I always use an income summary to close my revenues. So you close your revenues to the income summary. Remember that revenues carry a credit balance. To get rid of the credit balance, you would debit your revenue account and you would credit the income summary. That would be the closing entry for revenues. Expenses, we've talked about before, but now we're adding those contra revenues. Remember expenses carry debit balances. Also, our contra revenue accounts carry debit balances because they're contra revenues. So we want to close all those accounts with debit balances. Those will also close to income summary. To, so to close a debit balance, we would credit expenses and our contra revenues, and when we, we would debit the income summary. Once we've closed our revenues and expenses, we do not want to keep an income summary. We want to close that account out. Remember, the income summary is a temporary account, and it's only used during the closing process. So once we've closed revenue expenses to the income summary, we will get our balance in the income summary. And remember, if we have a credit balance in the income summary, that's net income because revenues exceed expenses and the contra revenues. If we have a debit balance in our income summary, that would indicate we have a net loss. So once we close the income summary, we will close our dividends to retained earnings. Remember, dividends is not an expense account. It just reduces your retained earnings. So there's an illustration of the income summary T account. So notice we closed our revenues, closed our expenses, closed our contra revenues to the income summary. And remember, if you have a credit balance in the income summary, it's net income. If you have a debit balance, it's net loss. You will not have a debit and a credit balance. Don't get confused by the T account that I have here. You will have one or the other balances here. You'll have a net income balance, a credit, or a net loss balance, a debit. Let's look at an example. Candy Creations accounts at June 30th included these adjustments. We had inventory of 5,600, cost of goods sold of 41,200, sales revenue of 86,900, sales discounts of 900, and sales returns and allowances of 1,400. The fiscal count of inventory on hand added up to 5,400. This is the only adjustment needed. So what we have here 
is on our books we show our inventory to be 5,600, but when we did a periodic count, we only found 5,400. So we have shrinkage there. So we need to, we need to take care of that. So we have to come up with an entry to show this adjustment. Now remember we've paid for that inventory, so we need to expense it. It's not there anymore, we can't sell it, so we need to expense it. So to journalize the adjustment, we would increase our cost of goods sold with a debit for the $200 and decrease our inventory for the $200. Now journalize the closing entries for the appropriate accounts. So again, the first accounts we close are the sales revenue accounts. Sales revenue was $86,900. Sales revenue carries a credit balance, so we will debit sales revenue to get rid of it. And we close it to the income summary with a credit of $86,900. Next, we want to close our expenses and our contra revenues. We had one expense, it was cost of goods sold, and we had two contra revenues, we had sales discounts and sales returns and allowances. So those all carry debit balances. To get rid of them, we would credit those accounts. We're closing them to the income summary, so we have to debit the income summary for the total. The total of cost of goods sold and our two contra revenues was $43,700. Now we need to close our income summary to retained earnings. Well, we can look at our numbers here, and I can see that, even without a T account, that my income summary has a credit balance of $86,900 and a debit balance of $43,700. So I know that I'm going to have a net income because my credits outweigh my debits so it's going to carry a credit balance. So to get rid of that credit balance in the income summary, I'm going to need to debit the income summary for that balance, which as we can see here, the income summary has a credit balance of $43,200. To get rid of that, I need to debit the income summary for $43,200, and I will credit retained earnings for $43,200. Now I will point out that you need to take special note to cost of goods sold here. They tell me in the problem that cost of goods sold is $41,200, but here I'm closing cost of goods sold of $41,400. Remember, the first entry we made was a shrinkage adjustment. We had to expense $200 of inventory that had disappeared. So that brought my balance of cost of goods sold to $41,400. Now let's compute Candy Creation's gross profit. So recall your gross profit income statement. We start with our sales revenue of $86,900. Then we need to subtract our contra revenues to get our net sales. So here we'll have net sales of $84,600. Then we subtract out the balance in our cost of goods sold account, which was $41,000. $400, don't forget about the shrinkage adjustment, and that will give us gross profit of $43,200.